Hello coders, I hope you are coding well. In the previous video, we created a page for the order tracking in our Angular application. And in today's video, we will create analytics API in our Spring Boot application. So let's get started. Before creating the API, we need to create the response DTO. So we can right click on our DTO package and we will create a new Java class and we will name this class as analytics response and after this we will give at the rate data annotation and we will give all args constructor annotation from Lombok and after this in this analytics response we need to get placed orders so we will create a field of type long and we will name it as placed and after the placed orders we need to return the shift so we will create an other field and we will name this as shift and after this we need an other field of type long and we will name this as delivered and after this we need to return the orders in the current month and we will create a field of type long and we will name this as current month orders and after this we will create another field for previous month orders and after this we need to return the earnings of the current month so we will create another field and we will name this as current month earnings and the last field we want is previous month earnings our analytics response DTO is completed now let's open our admin order service implementation and here we can start writing our method and this method will return analytics response and we can name this method as calculate analytics and in the body of this method first of all we need to get the current date so we will create a variable of type local date and we will name this as current date and we will initialize it by calling local date dot now method and to get the orders of the previous month we need to get the previous month as well so we will create another variable of type local date and we will name this as previous month date and we will initialize it by calling current date and then we will call minus months method and we will pass one and after this we will create a variable of type long and we will name this as current month orders and we will call a method get total orders for the month and in the params of this method we need to pass the month and year which we can get from our current date dot get month value and after this we need to send the current year which we can get by calling current date dot get year method and after this let's create this get total orders for month and this method will return a long and we can name this as get total orders for month and in the params we will accept int month and then int year and after this in this method we need to create the start date of the month and the end date of the month with the time and to do that we will use calendar and in this calendar first of all we will set the year which we can get from our param and after the year we will set the month and we will use our month from the param and then we will minus one from it because the month of the calendar starts from zero and after this we will set the day in this calendar and we will set one because we want the start of the month and after this we will set or of the day minute and second to the zero and after this we will create a variable start of month of type date and we will call calendar dot get time so we can build the date and after this we need to build end of the month and we will use same calendar and we will set day of the month to the maximum day of the month and after this we need to set or of the day and we will set it to 23 because in one day we have 24 hours and after this we will set the minute and second to 59 
and then we will create a variable end of month and we will call calendar dot get time to build this date and after this we will create a variable of list of orders and we can name this as orders and we will call our order repository dot and we will call a method get by date between and status so we can get the orders by the date and the status and for the date we will pass our start of month and end of month and for the order status we will pass order status dot delivered and at the end of this method we will write a return statement and we will call orders dot size method to get the total number of orders and before returning it we need to convert them to long and our get total orders for month is completed now let's go to order repository and let's create this method in the order repository and at the end of this class we will write this method and this method will return list of orders and we can write the jpa query as find by date between and then we will write and keyword and we will mention order status and in the params we need to mention date and we will name this as start of month and then we will mention date and end of month and the last param will be order status and we can name this as status and our repository method is ready now let's go back to our order service implementation and here we miss the order so let's mention the order here and after the orders of the current month we need to get the number of orders for the previous month so we will create another variable of type long and we will name this as previous month orders and we will call same get total orders for month method and for the month we will pass it as previous month dot get month value and for the year we will pass previous month date dot get year and after the orders of current month and previous month we need to get the earnings of current month and previous month and to do that we will create a variable and we will name this as current month earnings and here we will call another method get total earnings for the month and in the params of this method we need to pass the month and year and we can copy these params from here and we can mention them here and after this let's write the method and we can copy our existing orders method and we can paste it here and after this we need to update the name of it to get total earnings for the month and everything will be the same like we need to calculate the start of the month and then we will calculate end of the month and at the end of this method we will get the orders by date and order status and after this we need to remove this return statement and here we will create a variable and we will name this as sum and we will initialize it by zero long and then we need to write a for loop and in this for loop we will mention the single order and we will name this as order and we will loop through our orders from the repository and in this for loop we need to get the amount of the order and we need to sum it in this sum variable and to do that we can call our order dot get amount method and at the end we will write return statement and we will return our sum and with this our get total earnings for the month method is completed now let's go back and let's create another long variable and we will name this as previous month earnings and we will call same get total earnings method and for the params we can copy this and we can paste it here and after this we need to calculate total placed shipped and delivered orders and to do that we will create a variable long and we will name this as placed and we will call our order repository dot count by order status method and in the params of this method we will pass order status dot placed and after this let's go to our order repository 
and let's create this count by order status method. And here in the order repository, this method will return long and the JPA query is count by order status. And in the params of this method, we need to mention order status and we can name this as status. Now let's go back to our admin service implementation and let's duplicate this line here and we need to update the name to shipped and for the order status we will send it as shipped and after this we will duplicate this line one last time and we will name this variable as delivered and we will send the delivered order status and after this we will write a return statement and we will create new analytics response and here we will pass placed orders and then shipped orders and then delivered orders and after this we need to return the orders of the current month and then orders of the previous month and then we need to pass the earnings of the current month and at the end we need to pass previous month earnings and with this our calculate analytics method is completed now we will copy this and we will paste it here in the order service and after this we need to write endpoint to call this method so we will open our admin order controller and here we will copy this get all placed orders endpoint and we will paste it here and we need to update the method name to get analytics and after this we need to update the url and this should be slash order slash analytics and after this we need to update the return type and this will be analytics response and let's import this class here and at the end we need to update the method call to calculate analytics and with this our get analytics api is completed now let's run our application And as you can see, our application is up without any errors. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we will call this analytics API from our Angular application. And we will create a design to show these analytics.